Hello there, I'm Teresa Matsura, and you're listening to Uncanny Japan. It's the end of January, and that means Setsubun is just around the corner. Setsubun, if you're unfamiliar, is the day before spring starts, the last day of winter. It's usually on February 3rd, it is this year, but sometimes falls on the 2nd or the 4th. It's when after the sun goes down, households all around Japan gather with handfuls of roasted soybeans, throw open their doors, and scattering some of those beans outside, call, Oni wa soto, Oni stay out. Then tossing a few inside, Fuku wa uchi, good fortune come in. But I've talked about Setsubun before, in episode 29, The Devils Are Coming. And I've talked about Oni before, episode 93, The Ferocious Oni. But what I haven't talked about is a particular kind of Oni, something called an Ushioni, or Gyuki, or Cow Demon. Oh, I wouldn't be laughing if I were you. They're quite the murderous beast. And today I'll tell you how to recognize one, where they're found, why they're so heinous, and I'll also tell you a couple of interesting Ushioni legends, and more. Would you like to explore the stranger, more obscure corners of Japanese culture? Dig a little deeper into superstitions, curious customs, and all those mysterious creatures that inhabit the land? If so, then this is the podcast for you. Uncanny Japan is where I, author Teresa Matsura, share all the fascinating tidbits I unearth while doing research for my writing. From the bizarre to the ghastly, and everything in between. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, hey. For today's background soundscape, I hiked up into the mountains, far away from civilization and I found this river to hang out by. Exactly the place you don't want to be when you're trying to avoid an Ushioni. But I'm sure I'll be fine. So let's see. What do we know about these fearsome brutes? The kanji is straightforward. Ushioni. Ushi means cow or ox, and oni, demon or ogre. Their other name, Gyuki, is just the onyomi for the same characters. Another, just in case you didn't know, a single kanji character has at least two pronunciations in Japanese, the onyomi and the kunyomi. Onyomi comes from the Chinese pronunciations and kunyomi from the Japanese. So ushioni and yuki are the exact same characters. I've known about these guys for a long time but never did any research. I guess that's because I never really heard anything about them locally here in Shizuoka. And now I know why. They're mostly found west of me, in the Kinki and Shikoku areas, with popular legends from Mie, Wakayama, Kagawa, etc. So once I did dive in, holy cow was I surprised at how much information there is out there. Myths and legends abound, so there's no way I'm going to be able to cover everything but I think I can give you a nice taste of this foul beast. Before I get into what they look like, let me just mention that the Ushioni has been around for a very long time, and it was written about way back in the Heian era, where it was referred to as an Osoroshiki mono, a terrible thing. Okay, so what do they look like? That's a bit complicated. Originally, they look like what you expect them to look like. A big old ox head on the body of a big old oni. But there is also references to a bull's head on a kimono-clad human body and the body of an ox with the head of an oni. But probably the most common image is the one you'll find in old scrolls, where an ushioni has the head of an ox but the body of a giant spider with blade-like claws. So how did that happen? It's believed that this is kind of a merging of yokai, and it came about from some legends of Minamoto no Yorimitsu. In one of those stories, you'll find Yorimitsu-san defeats an Ushioni. 
and that monster he battles has the oni body and the cow head, just like I mentioned a minute ago. And if that sounds familiar, I've talked about him before somewhere. But his Ushioni looked like a gozumezu, or a pair of demons called oxhead and horse face in English. These are two creatures who guard the gates of hell and are, hey, the first things you meet after you die, which is wonderful. They'll escort you through the underworld if you're lucky, and if you try to escape, they'll come and hunt you down and do unspeakable things to you. Anyway, back to Minamoto no Yorimitsu-sama. There's another tale of him defeating a Tsuchigumo, or giant dirt spider, or earth spider. I'll do an episode on one of those little buddies later. But for now, it's assumed that those two legends got mixed up somehow, so that the Ushioni you see quite a bit nowadays is a giant spider with an ox head. In a book I have written in Japanese about yokai, it says that the Ushioni have very soft bodies and bright red horns. Even though they are huge, they don't make any sound when they're sneaking up on you. Or, even if they bump into something, completely silent. They've also got long tongues, those claws on the end of their spider legs, and fangs. So where can you run into an Ushioni? It's a good idea to be careful when you're around water. The ocean, rivers, lakes, waterfalls, and even the forest in general, and caves in particular which doesn't leave a lot of Japan left, mind you. But why water? I mean, it's a cow spider, not a fish. While I've never seen a water buffalo in Japan, I have read that you can find them in Okinawa today. And there are depictions of them in old artwork. So if you think about those very conspicuous horns the Ushioni has on its head, why, yes, they do look a lot like water buffalo horns. So that might be the connection there. And another thing about where they live. It's really interesting that in the Kinki region and in Shikoku, there are actually places named Ushioni Buchi or Ushioni Taki. And Ushioni Taki is a cow demon waterfall. But let me explain real quick what an Ushioni Buchi or a Fuchi is. I actually translated an old folktale a while back for patrons called Kappa no Fuchi, and I had to learn what they were because I couldn't find a single definition of them. A Kawa no Fuchi is the part of a river that runs really deep. It's often at the bend in a river or near a bunch of rocks. A quick Google translation brought up Abyss of Rivers which sounds dramatic, until you start reading folktales and lots of bad things happen in those dark, deep places called Fuchi. So it's a good image. Abyss. So there really are places named after the Ushioni, where they lived or appeared in the past or maybe even today? I don't know. But how would you know? I mean, if you were there. Well, if you're ever up in the mountains walking alongside a river and you see the water is muddied, especially in one of those Fuchi areas, then there might be an Ushioni down there mucking about. Or if you're really lucky, or unlucky, you might see whiskers or a tail sticking up above that cloudy water. That's another telltale sign. But there are also stories about how if you're near a body of water, an Ushioni might approach you transformed into a beautiful woman. If that happens, you should stay calm and catch her reflection in the river. If she's reflected as a terrible ox-headed demon, she's not a woman, she's a terrible ox-headed demon, and you're pretty much screwed. And can I just add here for a minute, what did old Japan have against beautiful women? Can you imagine how hard life was if you just happened to be really attractive back then? And everywhere you go for most of your life, people are accusing you of being this yokai or that tanuki or this nine-tailed fox or that ushioni. It must have been really hard. Okay, what do they do? Over and over it's written how brutal, ferocious, and bloodthirsty the ushioni are. Basically, they'll just eat you alive. And if that isn't bad enough, 
If you try to capture, attack, or kill one, it's not going down, but it will hold a grudge. It'll remember you, and then one day when you're least expecting it, it will eat you alive. And don't think you're off the hook if you just see one either. Just a glimpsing an Ushioni will make you sick, sometimes to the point of vomiting blood. Oh, and they spew poison sometimes, so there's that. My absolute favorite thing, though, is if they lick your shadow, you'll come down with a high fever and possibly die. In Wakayama Prefecture, they do something called Kageoku, which is one level up, and that's where they eat your shadow, which, in effect, is eating your soul. As if that isn't badass enough, sometimes the Ushioni likes to pair up with its friend, the Nureona, and together they make a fine game out of your demise. It goes something like this. For example, in Shimane Prefecture, the Nureona, who looks like a big snake with the face of a woman and long, wet, stringy hair, or probably more accurately, the Isona, who just looks like a poor woman wearing a kimono, will be walking along the shore carrying an infant, crying. She'll be calling out for someone to help her. And if you go and you see if she's okay, what you can do? She'll hand you the baby to hold for a little bit. And then, that little bundle of joy will begin to grow heavy in your arms. So heavy, in fact, that you're unable to move. And then, from the ocean rises the enormous form of the Ushioni, who will proceed to gobble you up. There's another interesting legend of an Ushioni from a temple called Negoroji, in Kagawa Prefecture, on Shikoku. Negoroji means fragrant root temple. Remember that. Anyway, while there is a Senju Kanon enshrined there, a thousand armed Kanon, there is also a painting and a statue of the Ushioni that are arguably more famous. The painting was drawn in 1808 by an artist named Yukigan Ishida, and it's a joyous image that I cannot get enough of. Imagine a beast standing on two legs, a somewhat monkey-like head with ox horns, big round eyes, big possibly bat-like ears. The creature has an open mouth showing downward-facing sharp fangs. It's sporting a striped furry body like a tiger. Hands with three clawed fingers are raised, and there are frilled bat wings under its arms. I'll put a picture in the show notes. It's quite scary cute. Like if it jumped out of you in the middle of the night, you'd be like, what the? But if it showed up dancing at a festival, you'd be like, aww. So briefly, the legend of Nekoroji goes something like this. About 400 years ago, an Ushioni appeared near the temple and destroyed the fields. A master archer named Yamada Kurando Takakiyo set out to shoot the Ushioni and kill it but no matter where he looked, he couldn't find it. Then he decided to pray to Senju Kanon for help, and he kept a lookout for the beast after that. Finally, on the 21st day, he saw the sparkle in the Ushioni's eyes, and he shoots, even as the Ushioni is leaping toward him. First arrow misses, second arrow misses, the third arrow strikes the beast right in its open mouth. The Ushioni howls in pain and runs off. Takakiyo follows the blood trail and finds it dead. He cuts off the horns and presents them to the temple, where they still reside today in a wooden box labeled Ushioni. But Terry, they can't always be such horrible human flesh-rending monsters. Aren't there any good ones? And I'd say, yeah, you're right. There are stories of some big-hearted Ushioni, and here's one. This is a legend from Wakayama Prefecture. The story is that a long time ago, a young man named Ueda was passing by the Mio River when he saw a beautiful girl. <clears throat> she was very hungry, and she asked for some food. Ueda, nice guy, shared his obinto with her. Now, fast forward to two months later when Ueda was again walking by that same river. 
but this time there was a flash flood and he was swept away. The fast-moving water carried him, half-drowning, to an Ushioni no Fuchi, one of those deep, abyss-like areas. But as he neared, he saw the girl from before on the bank. She, too, saw him, her lunch buddy, Ueda. She quickly transformed into an Ushioni and swam into the water and saved him. But sadly, not without a price. The legend has it that if an Ushioni saves a human, their body will melt away and they'll disappear, which is exactly what happened. Immediately after she rescued the young man, she dissolved right there into a pool of blood. Did you know there's a festival too? It's called the Ware Taisei Uwajima Ushioni Matsuri, and it takes place in Ehime Prefecture, Uwajima City. During the month of July, usually from the 22nd to the 24th, in this festival, gigantic, six-meter-high, bull-shaped floats are carried on the backs of all these young men parading through the streets of the city. They all have long necks and an oni mask and horns. They have a sword for a tail. Sometimes they'll meet and face off with each other. There's a lot of chanting and fun. At night, before the fireworks, at least one of them goes into the river to swim. I read somewhere that there were at least 20 of these Ushioni, and they're all in different bright colors. There are quite a few Matsuri festivals in Japan I want to visit one day, and I just added this one to my list. Okay, remember that temple that meant something like the scented root, or the fragrant root? Now here's something odd. There are also legends that the Ushioni is the spirit of a camellia root. Yes, really. Camellia is tsubaki in Japanese and an important and holy flower. It's useful, too. Tsubaki oil was and still is used on hair to make it shiny and beautiful. And it's also been around since the Heian era. So the tsubaki plant contains a great spirit, and tsubaki flowers are found in places where ushioni appear. Therefore, an ushioni is the spirit of a tsubaki. I don't know about that one, but let me wrap up today with my favorite Ushioni is a Tsubaki spirit tale. Once upon a time, an old fisherman went out to sea one night to fish. While out floating on the dark water, he saw suddenly an Ushioni appear in front of his boat. The old man bravely fought the Ushioni and dragged it all the way back to his home where he threw it on the ground and fell asleep in exhaustion. The next day he called all the villagers to show them his great accomplishment and to get their praise. Everyone gathered to see this loathsome beast he'd killed with his bare hands. After a few minutes, one of the villagers went over and struck it with a stick and announced, That's not an Ushioni, it's just a big old Tsubaki root. The end. I absolutely believe that happened. 100% that story is true. Dark night. Old man mistakes a big root for an ox demon. Fights ox demon root. Drags it home. Brags to friends and neighbors. Then learns it wasn't an ox demon after all. It was just a root. Old man argues, no, that can't be true. It must have turned into a root during the night. Entire village is like, yeah, right, Grandpa. Thank you so much for listening. A big hug to my patrons and supporters of the show. Thank you, Richard, for doing all the sound and making us an Uncanny Japan forum. Yes, we're on Discord, but there's something about old-fashioned forums that are so much easier to follow the conversations, start your own threads, and not get lost in a topic. Richard even finagled it so that you can post in the forum and a notification will come up in Discord. So if you'd like to join us on either or both of those, check out the show notes for links. And if it hasn't been cancelled this year, the next video I'm going to put up for patrons will be the Setsubun Festival at the Big Shrine in my town. So keep an eye out for that. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Two weeks. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>